Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining our workshop. Super excited to be here to tell you more about Echo 3D, a cloud platform for 3D asset management. Today we're going to talk about how you can use Echo 3D to store, stream, and manage 3D content in the cloud, and how you can stream it down to your devices, web browsers, um, and game engines all over the world. And we'll see some really, really cool features that will allow you to process 3D assets, manipulate 3D assets, and share them across your organization. So super excited to be here, and let's get started. I want to start by saying hello. I'm Alon, the founder of Echo 3D. I have a master's in computer science at Colum from Columbia University, specializing in AR and VR, and a bachelor's degree in computer science and electrical engineering. So a certified nerd and a big believer in the space of 3D and the intersection with cloud. At Echo 3D today, we have over 95,000 developers who are using our platform to build really, really cool 3D applications and massive organizations who are using our software to share 3D content through, um, throughout their organization and among team members. We're seeing 3D content everywhere these days. We're seeing it in gaming, we're seeing it in AR, VR, we're seeing it in e-commerce. Basically, this proliferation of this new type of content that is basically um, being shown everywhere and it's really, really immersive. But building apps with 3D content is really, really hard. Even though the content exists, it might be really hard to bring that into your application or change it remotely later. But if you think about it, you don't need to be a web developer to update a blog post. You can drag and drop an image or video, something that appears in web and mobile. And if I'm in New York and you're in California and we're both watching some episode on Netflix, we automatically get the best streaming experience. So what we did at Echo is we basically translated these concepts into the world of 3D allowing you to store, manage, and share 3D data um, and get the best 3D streaming experience. And what's really interesting about this kind of new type of content is kind of how bi-directional the content is. If you think about it, you as a user, you don't move an image or a video on a website, but you can definitely move a 3D couch across the room or a 3D avatar running around in the game. And that location needs to be updated on the cloud. And that content might have additional metadata um, that you can um, that you can add to, or that content can change throughout seasons. If it's a Christmas time, maybe you want to change your uh, avatar to have a Christmas hat. So content can actually change throughout time, and that change needs to be streamed as well. So this is basically what we've built at Echo. This kind of cross-platform cloud solution specifically for 3D asset management that allows you to store and stream assets and then share them across the organization. Um, either inside your um, kind of a public apps or inside um, kind of among your team. Um, you can register for a free trial right now at echo3d.com. Today in this workshop, we're going to guide you through the platform, play around with some of the features, and show you how you can leverage Echo to basically manage all your 3D assets, um, including um, images and videos um, that are in 2D. So just go to our website, equity.com, to register for a free account. Um, and um, kind of let's get started. I'm going to dive into um, our platform. So this is our platform. Once you register, you get an access to our console. Um, you get your project key. This is basically going to be uh, two, um, kind of two words and a number uh, that basically provides you with a project. You can have multiple projects. These are basically different repositories of 3D content um, that you can control, that you can manage, that you can share with others. Um, as you mentioned, you can upload 3D models. You can upload images, videos as well to the platform right here. Um, and then um, they're all kind of um, easily accessible. So let's dive in and see what you can do with Echo. So you can have your assets kind of in this central repository. You can separate the assets into different folders, um, into different collections. You can search for different assets that you have access to, favorite assets, filter for different assets. Um, you can explore different models. So for example, um, you can preview them. You can manage your metadata, which we'll talk about a bit later. You can tag them with specific locations. Um, you can see data um, that is associated with the asset itself. So for example, how the asset was used throughout time and where it was streamed. You can edit the model. We'll talk about that later, how you can kind of um, change textures 
um, and how you can kind of uh, recolor the model. You could convert and compress it, basically process the model, make the file much, much smaller, and use our proprietary conversion algorithms to optimize the model. You can version control it, which basically means they kind of go back and forth between past and future versions that either you or your team members created. You can manage permissions to that asset, who can actually access the model, who cannot. Um, and you can logically connect different um, models with other models, creating different hierarchies and different logical connections between them. So let's start with something super, super small. Let's see how we can view that model um, on our phones. So every asset you upload to Echo has this kind of short link attached to it. Basically, um, it's a link that redirects you specifically to view that model on web. Um, I'm going to share a link right here if anyone wants to uh, kind of see a model um, by themselves um, on their uh, kind of um, on their device. You can just go to your device, um, scan a QR code. I might just do it right here. If you're watching this live, you can just participate and scan this with me right now. Really, really simple. All you have to do is just scan the QR code uh, or go to the link. I'm going to do that with my device right here. There you go. Device is kind of opening up. I have the web page and I have the 3D model of the Empire State Building right here on my phone. How cool is that? Super, super simple. An asset that we upload to Echo is automatically shareable. We can also see it in augmented reality. So basically, I can open the camera, and the model will instantiate right here in front of me. Super, super simple stuff. But it is to show how easy it is to basically deploy applications at scale. You're also able to see the model uh, on different images. That's, uh, if you want to use image targets or on a face, if you want to use augmented reality using face filters. It's a really, really cool um, kind of quick view um, um, features that allow you to see that model in your uh, world. If it's on the floor, if it's on an image, if it's on your face, um, each model has this kind of uh, feature built in. Now let's move on to um, some data management. So we have the assets right here. Um, what can we do with them? So one thing is we can obviously download them um, in any different file format. So when you upload the file to Echo, you can upload any file format that you want. Our system automatically converts and compresses those models to different file formats, and they're all available right here to download. Um, you can share the model, as we saw earlier. You can add it to a folder, or you can uh, view it in augmented reality. You can also add notes to the model. These are comments that you can basically add for other team members who have access to the model that you can want to collaborate or tag other users to um, let them know that the model is changing or editing or whatnot. Um, and then you can also um, add metadata. So metadata is basically keys and values that are associated with the model. When you stream the model um, or the assets to a game engine or a web page, these metadata uh, entries stream in with that. Um, and these are really, really kind of powerful uh, tags that you can add to um, the model um, just by um, kind of uh, clicking here and adding that and annotating the model uh, with additional information that might be useful. This data is also available uh, in the data page, where you can basically just annotate um, metadata to every model that you have access to. The model editor is a really, really powerful page in which you can basically edit the model, retexture it, um, change its color, create variants. So if you see this model right here, if I decide that it's Christmas time and we want to change the model to be red, bam, we can do that right here and save that model. We can overwrite existing uh, entry. We can create a new entry. We create a variant with the um, existing entry and then kind of versioning this out. But you can basically have this kind of way uh, to change assets really, really quickly. And that's super, super fun. Uh, you can also retexture it um, really, really easily. You just upload a new texture and there you go. Super, super simple and a really, really powerful tool. You don't have to go back to Blender or Maya or wherever you created that. 3D model or scan, you can just change it right here, um, and that affects the model going forward. Uh, you can also affect uh, more advanced um, properties like uh, roughness or uh, updating the normal maps, and you can do it all right here. You can also um, merge, separate, uh, and edit different scenes. So you can throw in a bunch of 3D models that you have all together, 
save them together as one model. Or you can take one model that is really complex and delete some of its rigging, delete some of its sub, um, kind of children um, to make it more simple. You can do that kind of manually right here and then export that back into your content page. Another really powerful page is the access page where you can kind of, again, um, monitor the access, grant permissions, um, and, and change um, how other users are able to interact with your collection. You can add different collaborators, like an admin that has access to everything, a user that can't really delete stuff, but they can kind of contribute uh, and, 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 edit, and edit data, or a viewer that can delete, can add, but can have access to these assets remotely. Another interesting tool is the WebAR Customizer. This is the page that allows you to customize that kind of web page that we saw earlier to see things in augmented reality. So if you want to add buttons or you want to add notes um, that affect the experience or like your logo, if you're doing some really cool product preview, you can do that here. Um, really, really powerful page. And the point is, again, to give you full control of the um, kind of web preview of the model when you share the asset with um, other collaborators. Another cool um, page is our location page. Here you can monitor your data distribution, where your content is being streamed into, what servers are supporting your application, um, and where your users are coming from. So basically where you're getting most of your data. If you see that suddenly you have a lot of users uh, in Austin, Texas, you can hook up a server in Texas. Or if you're seeing that you suddenly have a lot of um, content being tagged in uh, Europe, it might be worth hooking up a server in Europe to uh, better the performance there. The users page allows you to monitor users and where your content is being viewed. So here you can see that I have a lot of um, assets that are being seen um, around the New York uh, area, uh, if it's Soho or if it's West Side. Basically data that's being streamed from Echo to uh, users in these locations. One of the most powerful pages that we have is the insight page, basically shows you analytics and how kind of team members and users are using your content. You can see your most popular um, um, asset. You can see the most popular assets across time, see analytics on um, how your content is being used and how your project um, usage is going. So how many API calls you're making, how much bandwidth and storage you're using from the cloud. And you can also view logs on your entire kind of um, actions that are being performed on your content. It's adding stuff, removing stuff, um, creating API calls, uh, and so on and so forth. It's all really robust and available right here. Another really cool page is our Convert and Compress page. This is where you can kind of utilize all of our conversion and compression tools, um, convert different files, different file formats, create 2D thumbnails, compress the model if it's through our proprietary conversion, or an open source conversion like Draco. And you can also poly reduce the models um, to any kind of um, poly count that you want. You can say, I want this model decimated by 35%. And that will happen right here. Um, you just change that and it will um, allow you to decimate it to have any, any kind of percentage. Um, so super, super powerful uh, tools. For developers out there, we have a robust um, collection of tutorials that you can use. Um, all of these tutorials show you how to build applications, how um, to take 3D assets from the cloud and build them into um, applications for Unity and Unreal and web and mobile um, and so on and so forth. And it's really, really cool to kind of just explore what you can uh, build and what applications you can build. All of these applications are totally, totally open source. Uh, in the settings page, you can see your usage, you can see your monthly plan. Um, and you can kind of manage um, the usage of your um, projects. You can also decide to cap your usage in different projects if you want to share a specific collection with a client or a collaborator, but you don't want them to go through um, some limits. You can put um, specific caps through this page. You can also um, review kind of um, associated projects that you have, change settings um, around security. Um, and kind of monitor your um, project. The profile page is a really cool one. Um, allows you to add um, your own kind of avatar, your own 3D avatar um, with um, our kind of avatar partners or um, just a cool profile pic. Um, you can also link your Sketchfab account right here to import models from Sketchfab. Perfect. So we saw how you can use the console. We saw how you can kind of, um, um, 
interact with the content and how you can kind of use the platform to do so. Now um, let's go some really basic workflows and then um, dive into a little more deeper um, technical conversations. So I'm going to click this button right here, Add to Cloud, and we'll upload the. It will open the Add to Cloud dialog. Here you can upload your own files from your computer, or you can use our search engine to find uh, 3D models that you can use for free um, to add to your collection. It's really really cool. Um, we have this really robust search engine that has over 850,000 um, assets that you can use for free. Um, so maybe we can kind of search for something right here, for example, cat. Um, it will search for this um, kind of models that, that fit the description that you can add to your uh, project. So super, super simple stuff. Uh, once you add them to the collection, they are just added to your um, um, collection, your repository, and shared with the other people um, in that have access to your project. Now let's transition to something a little more technical and some technical resources that we provide. Uh, that allow you to build applications and use our APIs um, and uh, tooling. So here you can actually see a lot of our integrations, if it's integrations with Unity or Unreal or JavaScript or React or Java and so on and so forth. So many amazing developer tools that connect to Echo 3D's API and allow you to instantiate 3D models in those environments through the cloud. So everything I've shown you so far uh, on Echo is also available through an API. So basically a call to the server that provides information back, um, then all of our integrations kind of parse out and um, instantiate and use that 3D models. So everything you saw so far is also available as an API for you, for you as developers. We have really robust resources like our documentation, uh, which is a step-by-step -step guide of everything I just showed you. So really a robust, um, kind of um, um, record of everything we do, everything we have, every page, and kind of every every feature is available here. And obviously, a uh, very robust documentation of our API as well. Uh, we have our GitHub page. Our GitHub page is filled with so many amazing examples and open source um, examples of projects that you can use for free, um, and really a, an amazing variety of use cases. You can submit a feature request. You can join our Slack community. This is where you can ask our team for support questions and engage other members of the community um, that are working on amazing 3D projects to help you out or answer any questions. Uh, you can reach uh, you can reach us uh, through um, through email or message us on on Twitter or X. Um, really, really um, responsive and really try to support every uh, developer and, and team member out there. Now let's do something quick. Let's jump into Unity, a game engine a lot of developers love to use and show how our integration works. All you have to do is you download our SDK right here, you add it to your Unity project, and um, you should be able to uh, start streaming models really quickly, and we'll see that right now. Uh, so check it out. This is Unity. Um, we have our SDK uh, kind of built in already. To dive into how you can kind of integrate Unity and Echo, just go to our documentation. Um, in our YouTube page as well, we have um, kind of videos on how to do that quickly. Um, but this is an empty scene. There's nothing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, stream this 3D model, for example. So I'm going to copy paste um, our our project key right here as the API key, and I am going to grab this entry specifically. This is the one I want to um, stream into Echo. Pressing play, data streams from the cloud into the game engine. You don't have to do anything else for that. And bam, that model just appears out of thin air. Uh, you saw it here. Let me just grab, there we go. Um, automatically appears um, and instantiates in the 3D environment. If I stop this from playing, everything disappears because nothing actually persists on the memory. Everything is coming in from the cloud. If I restart it, it will basically um, reappear again and instantiate from the cloud. Super, super simple. How cool is that? Now, this rotation that we see right here is actually a feature that you can control remotely. Um, so if you go right here and you go to the metadata that we discussed earlier, if I change this metadata, instead of being direction equals left, I'll do equals uh, right. Or you know what? Let me just delete that um, data. It will stop rotating. How cool is that? So basically, what we have here is this kind of bidirectional connection between Unity and the cloud. We're basically saying, if this metadata changes, update that in Unity and um, basically send it almost like a push notification if something changed, and um, that change will um, 
affect your game or your application. Really, really powerful tool that allows you to publish updates in real time while the app is actually running. Uh, so let's see that again. I'm going to add um, direction equals, let's say, right this time. Bam, it's only such a rotate again. How cool is that? So here's a really, really simple example of how you can use metadata to affect your application in real time and push updates. Um, in this example, it's a really simple one, but you're limited only by your imagination. You can add any number of metadata tags, parse them, use them however you like. Um, and um, these are really, really kind of easy and powerful tools that allow you to, to do so. Um, another example I can show here um, is updating a, a model's name. So maybe let's take a different model this time. Let's grab this model instead. Update that. Stream this right here. This um, building will appear right here. There you go, editor object. Uh, but let's say I want to change the name of this object that I don't really like that's called uh, editor object. What I can do is use metadata, as mentioned earlier, called building. Restart the application. Now data will stream from the cloud to, um, to Unity and BAM, suddenly it's called building. Really, really cool, really, really easy, just because um, in our script, we just said, if you have a name, if you have made a this name, that's what you need to do, set that name. Perfect. Um, let's review some um, simple scripts. Don't worry, it's not going to be too much, um, but just to kind of give you a hang of how to use Echo uh, and Unity uh, together. I'm just going to open this up. So here's a script in C Sharp uh, in Unity format. Uh, the base key is attached to every model that is instantiated from the cloud. Uh, this model, um, th this script uh, allows you to basically parse um, the metadata and do whatever you want with it. Um, so for example, right here in the start function, evident by its name, uh, happens when you start the application, uh, we have this snippet of code that says, um, if you have any additional data, and if that additional data is called name, then set the name of the object to that name. This is exactly what we saw right here. I changed the name of the building, and that happened um, also to change automatically. Um, here we have the update function. This is a really interesting function. This is almost like a while true or uh, infinite for loop that constantly runs every single frame. And every change you do here um, basically is instantiated every single frame. Be very cautious with this function because, because it's running every single frame. If this function gets stuck or hangs, your entire application may get stuck or, or hang or not work properly. Um, so let's kind of edit things a little bit and see um, what we can kind of do here. Um, earlier, we had this thing that in order to change the name, I had to reset the application. Um, let me move this snippet of code from this kind of start function to update function, which means now it will check every time, do I have any additional data? If I do, do I have a name? And if so, then change that name. This means that now but the effect that we had happening um, kind of just in the start function now will happen every single frame. Uh, so let's see how that kind of ports um, in the application itself. So let's let's give Unity a second to recompile the uh, the new script. There you go. Running the same app. So again, we just change the script, but the app remains the same. We have this building called building. But now if I change the name of the building to something else, for example, Kevin, and we save this, go back to Unity, bam, automatically change to Kevin. How cool is that? These are simple examples, but they're to show that you can use um, data to do anything you want, and you can kind of affect your application in real time just by setting um, kind of short, short snippets of code um, and, um, and affect the application as much as you want. This app is still a native Unity app. It does everything that any Unity app can do, and you can code it however. It's just that the 3D models, the meshes, the, um, the resources are coming in from the cloud. How cool is that? OK, so let's recap. We registered to Echo. We uploaded content. We saw how you can interact with content, how you can share it, how you can um, process it, how you can um, create different projects, um, and really all the tools that you need in order to manage 3D assets in the cloud. Uh, let's recap a little bit. We saw. Um, how Echo allows you to store and stream content anywhere 
um, across platforms. We saw how we can take a model and bring it to my phone, how you can take that model and bring it to Unity uh, or see it on the web page. Really, really robust set of tools to basically share um, and um, kind of um, process these models as well around compression, conversion. We saw how developers can choose um, either the API or our variety set of tools to integrate 3D content to their existing platforms. And we saw how easy it is for content creators and team members to manage content with the console without doing anything technical. We build, store, and deliver those models to all the devices and all the platforms um, everywhere in the world. If you're building some app or a game, utilizing our API and utilizing our tool set um, will make them go from apps that are really, really huge and really hard to update to much smaller apps that we can update literally in real time like we did in Unity, that we just change a few metadata points and bam, it changed automatically. As developers, you obviously save a lot of time and money. As content creators, you don't need any technical skills to manage and deliver content. And companies can scale to enterprise level, sharing data all over the world, monitor the usage of your content, um, and allow team members to collaborate in any region um, on these 3D models and uh, their usage. We today enable um, 3D experiences everywhere in amazing use cases, if it's e-commerce and industrial use case and automotive and e-commerce and training and data visualization and gaming and so much more. Uh, so definitely register for our free trial, test out the system, play around with it, and really get inspired of what you can do with 3D. As we mentioned before, we have over 95,000 developers on our platform who are building really, really cool applications through our console or through our API. Um, and it basically is really, really amazing to see this kind of evolution of content. We went from images to videos to now 3D, and it's really inspiring to see what people are building. Um, some success stories include companies in um, um, industrial design, um, gaming, art, um, even use cases like uh, digital collectibles, um, really, really cool and innovative stuff. So kind of get inspired and start building yourself. A little bit more about us, the company. Um, we won a bunch of awards and we're backed by some of the most amazing investors in the country, um, like Qualcomm Ventures, Conway Ventures, Reimagine Ventures, Space Capital, Techstars, and Info Ignite. And we're there for any major uh, tech event. So if you see our team at CES or AWE, please, please say hello um, and, and, and tell them that you attended this workshop. Uh, we always um, like to kind of engage users and engage developers in the wild. Make sure you register at echo3d.com, grab your um, free account right there, and start building. This is definitely a time to build in 3D. Um, we're super, super excited to see what you're going to build. Um, make sure to um, join our Slack community, ask questions, um, showcase your work, um, and really, really start uploading content to the cloud uh, to basically make it as shareable and viral um, with everyone. Thank you so much for attending this workshop. Check us out at equity.com um, or reach out to our Slack channel. We're going to leave this here that you can scan this um, kind of to, to view this 3D model on your phones right now. Thank you so much for attending our workshop. Really, really appreciate it. Have an amazing, amazing uh, year um, and um, start building. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye for now.